Welcome back to another edition of Max and Nikki 1000th Time Reactions, where we react to a song after listening to it for our 1000th time. We release three videos a day, every day, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on all this great content of ours. That's right. So what are we going to listen to right now, Max? We're going to listen to Road to Nowhere by Talking Heads. Ah, it's my favorite Talking Heads song. Sure. And we'll talk about why it is uh, after we listen to the song. Sure. If I said by Talking Heads instead of the Talking Heads. But, sure. You know, you could say the Talking Heads. I, I just <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway. <laughs> what do you? Who cares? I don't know. Um, now, if you're new to the channel, uh, what we do on this channel is we listen to the whole song through without pausing, and uh, then we talk about it afterwards. We go in, have an in-depth analysis about it after we listen to the whole song through. Um, so, but you know, listen along with us, you know, bop your head to it if you feel like it. Uh, but, and also we're going to be watching the music video to this. That's true. Cause uh, the music video is very, it's very cool. This. And also influential on a previous video, uh, on sledgehammer actually. Uh, it, oh, this came out first. This came out beforehand. Oh, really? They, in fact, they, they used certain methods in this sure. video that they ended up using in, in Sledgehammer. Sure. Well, we'll talk uh, about that in a second. But before we listen so, to it and watch, I uh, just want to remind you all, as we usually do, that we have another YouTube channel called Max and Nikki, um, which we perform oldies tunes, jazz standards, and originals in that vein. That's right. And we got comedy videos on there as well. Mm -hmm. But for right now, let's take a listen and a watch to Road to Nowhere by the Talking Heads. Mm -hmm. Or for by, our 1,000th time. Yeah, or, or by talking heads, if you want. Whatever you prefer. <laughs> okay. Here go we go. ahead. Well, we know where we're going, but we don't know where we've been. And we know what we're knowing, but we can't say what we've seen. Give us 
Oh, I, I got, got shivers at the end I there. Got goosebumps I got shivers, there. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, I, I love that song. Great I mean, song. It's a nostalgic song for us because uh, it's, featured, it's in featured in the movie in the Little movie, Monsters, Little Monsters, which um, we watched with we Fred Savage and, and Ben Savage and and Howie Mandel. Yeah, um, Howie Mandel. But it's featured in that movie. What's funny is this: the song that this album is on called, is called Little Creatures. <laughs> That's right. right. It is interesting. I mean, this album this was made before the movie Little Monsters. Sure. Um, um, I but, think maybe they used the, there was obviously I think they used the song in that movie purposefully because the, sure like, sure of course but it's used at the end of the movie and there's just you know he ends up in Malibu in the end of the movie and there's just images I have as, as from my, my childhood where I just that song goes hand in hand with that it's movie in my childhood yeah. you know it's a there's a lot of nostalgia around this song sure sure um now, as you saw in the music video, and if you've seen Sledgehammer, you could even watch our previous reaction video to Sledgehammer. You notice there is a lot of stop motion animation in this music video, and they would end up using that technique in, in the, the same director for this music video. Is and the same director uh, for same, Sledgehammer. Uh, stop motion animators, right? Uh, I'm not K? sure if the Brothers K worked on this or not. Maybe they did, but um, um, but uh, you know, you can see there's a specific moment with uh, David Byrne. He's being surrounded by he's a lot of things. sitting down, and it looks like every he's, you know, it looks like he's still, but everything around him is changing. And Although, that's really kind of like, I feel like that in particular was, you know, maybe Peter Gabriel was like, I want my whole music video to be like that. Sure, you sure, know? sure. But there was other parts, too, where there Tina was Weymouth Tina and, Weymouth uh, and, and Chris, uh, Chris um, France. France, 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 yeah. Chris Franz, I think is what his name is. Uh, they're kind of dancing as an old couple, mm -hmm. and the way in a stop motion animation kind of way, and that that's kind of used in in Sledgehammer as well. Right. Um, anyway, but let's speak you know, about the music. Um, you know, they have like it sounds like the song is like influenced by Zydeco music. So there's a Zydeco because they have um, they have an accordion and they also have um, a washboard as well. Which right. Is kind of a Zydeco kind of it's feel. Zydeco go feel yet. It sounds, it sounds. This is sounds eighties po and pop. It sounds like a, a good pop song, you know. Sure. Um, um, the harmonies are really nice on this, obviously. Right. Actually, in fact, um, when David Byrne had presented this song to record, he thought it was re too repetitive at first. So I and I I understand that. I I do think it's a little repetitive. Actually. Right. But but well, I actually like it. I like it a lot. Um, no, I like it a lot too. But. You know, if you were to pick it apart, you could one could say it one is a could repetitive. make an argument that it is a, a little repetitive, but that's why he created the introduction of the harmony singing at the in the beginning because he thought, okay, I need to give this something a little bit extra, a mm -hmm. little another extra section here, um, and so that's why he did that. And how beautiful it is to hear it. And what's kind of cool about that har that intro harmony section is every everyone's singing in harmony. But yet they mix it in such a way to really you could still hear David Byrne's voice kind of above it all in a sure, way. Sure, yeah. It still comes out crisp and clear, and maybe it's because that's just his the natural quality of his, of his voice is so unique that you hear it amongst everybody else, mm -hmm. um, and him in particular. But I think they also mixed it in such a way where you could hear him, you can single him out. You know, that's kind of cool. I think uh, it's kind of beautiful the what they show with tina and chris in in the beginning of the video um it's kind of like the evolution of their their life together their their romantic life together and they're mm -hmm. dancing together it, it just it it's pretty it's nice it's sweet well know? it's almost like they're on a road to nowhere but they're gonna just kind of do it gonna do it together but maybe it's all right you know yeah uh, um it's it's god it's just a great song that gives me chills every time you know um and I just wanted to mention. Yes, we had the washboard and the and the the accordion. I love how there's a, an accordion pa player who's kind of climbing up a hill too, which is kind there of. There was funny. a cool part where there's harmonies going on, and you hear, or sorry, I think it's just David Bird singing, and then you hear the harmonies come in. That's the yes, like yeah. while he's singing, right? You know? right. That like was kind of harmonizing cool. with him. You know, yeah, That's that was a neat part neat, as well. Interesting technique there and then there was also i think some distorted guitar in there as well which kind of added uh, uh, uh you know obviously a more modern touch to it than just a straight up zydeco kind of sure tune, you know you um, know just real quick anecdote you know we saw we went to a screening of the last emperor a few years ago and um and the music of that movie and the is, music of that movie was written by 
uh, Rishi Sakamoto and David Byrne. And David Byrne. And, um, and um, Kong... Well, I can't remember his name, but it was mainly written by uh, Rishi Sakamoto Kong and David Su Byrne. Or something, or? And um, there was a Q&A afterward with David Byrne and Rishi Sakamoto, and it was when we were uh, standing up, uh, you know, applauding the film. It, it wasn't our first time watching the film. We had seen it uh, many times before, and, and we loved the score to it. And it was just... While we were standing up, applauding it to it, just right behind us, standing there was David Byrne and Rishi Sakamoto, and it was like, oh my God, these legends are right behind us. And at the same time, you're thinking, but they're just kind of regular, ordinary guys, you know? Right. Anyway. But it was just, I mean, I will say though, and I think even David Byrne would would agree, is that Rishi Sakamoto, he composed most of it, though. Sure. I mean, I mean the main theme. His the main are, theme is Rishi Sakamoto. Rishi but, Sakamoto. But it was just cool to see, you know, it was cool to see these guys. two guys. I mean, Rishi Sakamoto had more to talk about. I mean, on the Q and A, because for that reason. Sure, sure. But and, well, and but it was still. I mean, yeah. Talk seeing David Byrne talk, you just you just thought, well, this is just a regular guy, you know. Yeah. Um. And uh, but it was just. Uh, I don't know. It was pretty cool. They just they were just standing right behind us, and we're like, oh my god, this is crazy. Anyway, um, this song is great, uh, and I think that'll do it for this reaction video. If you like what you heard and saw today, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications to find out about more Max and Nikki reaction videos. Please keep tuning in.